New this morning, some data uh, coming out from data startup Evident out with an artificial intelligence index, which is ranking the banks on performance and adoption of AI. Topping the list for the third straight year is J.P. Morgan Chase. Joining us right now, first on CNBC, is Alexandra Musadivide, uh, co-founder and CEO of Evident. How did I do? Okay, you did very well. Pretty close. Pretty close. close. I really wanted Musavisa Day. Musavisa Day. Musavisa Day. Beautiful. We're, we're okay. We did. So, we did a lot of practicing. <laughs> Help yeah. us here understand what these rankings really are and what they're actually ranking, if you will. Yes, yes. So it's being released today, so it's very exciting. It is the, um, it's a ranking of the 50 biggest banks in North America and Europe. And what we look at is the entirety of the activities of AI in, in banking. So we look at talent, the whole talent stack of a bank, uh, research patents, uh, investments into ventures, partnerships, open source, use cases, ROI. So how much is this about the actual banks using AI versus investing in AI? It's all about what they, they're using AI. So that transition to being an AI first or AI forward bank, we look at how far the banks are in that journey and how mature they are. Okay, so then now we have JP Morgan at the top. Yes. How much distance is there between the various banks on this list? Meaning the, is JP Morgan so far, I mean, is, is JP Morgan a completely different league than everybody else? Yes. They are. Yes, they okay. are. And, and leading more. So what we've seen um, since the last update uh, last year is that the leading banks and with JP Morgan in the lead are leading more. The leading banks are actually growing their activity by twofold, so 2x of the rest of the index. So what we're seeing is that those that had a head start uh, are doubling down and JP Morgan is the lead in the lead there and it's far ahead of, of, of most of and they're use and but let's walk through the actual use cases because I think one of the things that happens is you speak to a lot of folks at these banks and at most corporate America most of corporate America and they are not actually thrillingly happy with what the AI is giving them right now meaning the use case is not totally there because of hallucinations because of uh, leakage meaning you know, there's lots of data you can't actually just put into these systems. Yes, absolutely. And so we're in the very early innings of AI adoption, right? So we're just in, uh, ChatGPT got released, we've been in a testing phase, and then now the leading banks are putting these use cases into production. And it's right, there's a lot of uh, reliability issues, and a lot of uh, the use cases are being tested out. But we are seeing that the leading banks are putting Gen AI use cases into production for internal purposes with a human in the loop. So what we're looking at in the future is looking at Agentic AI, but we're not there yet. But the leading banks are starting to look at that too. But yes, the but, issue let, is But actually, let's talk then just genuinely about the actual context they're using it. And the reason I ask is, and I think we mentioned this yesterday, you know, if you talk to uh, Mark Benioff, for example, at Salesforce, he will tell you that actually most of these products that Microsoft's put together, even with OpenAI and some of the other products that are out there, they're actually not really up to snuff yet. They just aren't. And the, and the, and the question becomes, is the market ahead of itself? With how right, and so, yeah. and everybody is trying to, you remember, this is, there's a little bit of a 1999, can we Definitely. put .com at the mm -hmm. end of our uh, name so that everybody can think that we're like ahead of the game even though it doesn't really matter what's happening? And so yeah. I, I, part of me is asking you this question because I want to really understand the use cases that you actually think are real and are working. So the, uh, the use cases that are real and are working are um, examples would be uh, for wealth management, for financial analysts. They, uh, the Gen AI tool that helps them cut a lot of the drudge work in terms of pulling together information that just means that they cut out maybe days of work. It's not going to replace, but it augments, it supports their work. So we're looking at productivity gains somewhere between 10 to 30 percent if it's, you know, with the banks that are using it so far. But there are a lot of kinks and a lot of things that need to be ironed out, and it's not producing those productivity gains first anticipated that were up in the sort of 60, 70 percent uh, area. So uh, those are use cases. So in coding. the wealth management, you you're talking yeah. about wealth management. Give me an example. So you are an analyst that are pulling together some uh, information that you need to present to your client. Yep. That information might have taken you three, four days, maybe a full week to pull together. You could okay, do but that are they in 30 pulling the num Here's the question. Are they actually using AI? Because I, and I'm, and you can yeah. see I'm skeptical because I actually don't believe it. Um, do you believe that anybody's using AI against actual uh, financial information insofar as my financial information is inside some institution and they are taking my financial information and then actually 
doing something with it and actually using prompts to actually go get the, get the information, not copy and pasting uh, the information from some other screen. They are take, they're pulling together information on their clients. Right. In Do I believe that they're making like books so that when if I walk in and they want to make a presentation mm -hmm. to me? Sure. Yes. And that is, that is the lion's share of the use. It's pulling together the information on you to make a nice presentation that they would spend three to four days on before. So it's cutting out that drudge work. It's cutting out that... Right. It's, 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 it's fancy but, PowerPoint. But it's not... It is. Well, so far it is. Absolutely. Right. And it's not going to be let out without a human in the loop for a while. It's not going to pull together that information and send it to you, Andrew, and, and you make a decision that's then going to be automatically executed. Not yet, but it's coming. It's on the horizon. But it is, it's in, in, in the early days, early innings, as I, mean, I we, said. We entered into a partnership a couple years ago, CNBC, with, with companies that look at screens and it could be earnings per share or free cash flow or whatever. And then out of the S&P 500, here's a the 15 companies that, that manifest all 10 of those qualities that you're looking for and they give it to you. And AI needs to take that and I guess what would it need to do? Customize Andrew Ross Sorkin's age and risk profile and put it all together. I'm saying, I'm saying most it, it banks are not like, even allowing you to sound. query the data directly. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Yeah, but where's the AI not even in, in just doing an, a screen like that that generates certain names of companies? Where, where, well, you pull in all of that. I mean, you've got much more power now to pull in lots more data points and okay. generate some generate knowledge and content. And that has been done by hand and, before. And, and, almost, be, and almost be an S&P index fund if you do yes. all that.